On today's edition of MC Gen Chem, Stoichiometry and the Chemistry of Carbonates. If a compound contains the ion HCO3-, then it is called a bicarbonate. A popular example of this is sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, which is known as baking soda. Since bicarbonates are thermally unstable, they will undergo a decomposition reaction when they are under high temperatures. For example, if NaHCO3 is heated at high temperature, then the following reaction will occur, leaving behind a solid and two gases. These gases are H2O and CO2, and the solid is Na2CO3, also known as sodium carbonate because the ion CO, CO3-2- is called a carbonate. Bicarbonates and carbonates react with acids to give similar products. For example, NaCO3 will react with HCl to give NaCl, H2O, and CO2. K2CO3 will react with 2HCl to give 2KCl, H2O, and CO2. For this lab, you will first need to know how to calculate the molar mass in the compounds you will be using. We will walk you through calculating the molar mass for NaHCO3. The molar mass for Na is 22.98 grams per mole. The molar mass for hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. The molar mass for carbon is 12.011 grams per mole. And the molar mass for oxygen is 15.999, which needs to be multiplied by 3 since they are 3 oxygen atoms. Add all of these up and the total molar mass for NaHCO3 is 83.998 grams per mole. Do the same calculation for Na2CO3. The molar mass that you should calculate should be 105.968 grams per mole. Calculate the mass of Na2CO3 that would be formed by heating 1 gram of NaHCO3. To do this, you start with 1 gram NaHCO3. Convert this to moles by using the molar mass of NaHCO3. This leaves you with the moles of NaHCO3. Then you can do a mole to mole conversion to get the moles of Na2CO3. Two moles of NaHCO3 react to form one mole of Na2CO3. Convert moles of Na2CO3 to grams of Na2CO3 using the molar mass. The final answer is 0 0.638 grams. For the first portion of lab, you will need a Bunsen burner apparatus with wire gauze, matches, a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, your unknown compound provided by your professor, and of course, don't forget your goggles. Light your Bunsen burner and heat your flask for five minutes. Once you have heated your flask, allow for it to cool and then determine the mass. Add half of your unknown compound to the flask and determine the mass, mass of the flask in compound. Remember you have to subtract the mass of the flask to get the mass of the compound. Heat up the flask and the compound for 15 minutes. After heating is complete, remove the flask and allow to cool to room temperature and finally determine the mass. For the second part of this lab, you will need a hot plate, an evaporating dish, the remaining unknown compound, DI water, HCL, wooden sticks, matches, and of course, keep your goggles on. Place the evaporating dish on the hot plate and heat for five minutes. Then determine the weight of the dish after it has cooled. Add the remaining unknown compound to the evaporating dish and determine the mass. Add DI water until the compound has dissolved. Test the pH of your solution using litmus paper. You will use blue litmus paper and red litmus paper. An acid will turn the blue litmus paper red and a base will turn the red litmus paper blue. This turned our red litmus paper blue, therefore our solution is basic. Add a few drops of 6 molar HCl to your solution and observe the gas that is formed. Next. Place a glowing wooden stick over the solution after adding more HCl and observe what happens. Continue adding 6 molar HCl until the solution becomes acidic. 
test the pH of your solution using litmus paper. After doing this, the blue litmus paper turned red, meaning that our solution is now acidic. Under a hood, gently heat your evaporating dish on a hot plate until all the liquid has evaporated, leaving behind a residue.